Hi, it's Gary. Welcome to today's video. Today, I've got a fountain pen showdown for you. And this is two pens that I've only had a couple of months now. The first one is the Pilot E95S. This has got a 14 karat gold nib. The second one is the Waterman Karen with an 18 karat gold nib. Now, both these pens, they were gifted to me by my loving wife during the ink vent period really been enjoying using them so i thought let's do a showdown so let's take a quick look at the pens we'll do some size comparisons writing sample and then i'll give you my thoughts on each of these pens welcome down to the mat here we've got our two pens we've got the pilot e95s we've got the waterman Karen. We're not going to be doing a detailed in-depth dive on each pen. What we're going to do is just be comparing the two against each other. So very obviously the first thing we see is the size difference. That Pilot E95S, I think it's just on the top range of what you would call a pocket pen. It's a lot bigger than a Kareko Sport, but still maybe, yeah, that would fit quite nicely in my pocket. Not sure that I would do that because both these pens, they're both gold nibbed. We'll take a look at the nibs in a second. The E95S. The actual body, I think, is the least interesting part of this pen. You know, it's nice. It's a burgundy colour. But I love... I think it's like it's meant to be a champagne type of cap there. Absolutely love this. I've got a nice flat end there up at the top. Maybe a little bit of a dome to it. Also got a flat end on the bottom. Would it stand on the bottom? Yeah, so I think there might be a bit of a derm on that as well. We've got a nice shaped clip. I like this fancy shape here at the top of the clip. Then as we come down there, we've got Pilot. Clip feels fairly stiff. I don't use the clips, so it doesn't really bother me. Nice taper there as we see going down that cap. With the Karen, I'm just going to turn this around. This colour is called Marine Amber. This is absolutely gorgeous. It's so pretty to look at. I don't know how best to describe it. You know, it looks very dark, nearly black. But then where it's catching the light, it's like a brownie orange colour. I think that's where they get the amber from. Really nice. We've got a torpedo style cap there, so it's coming to a bit of a point. Then we're very quickly tapering out. The clip looks to be part of the rest of the cap where here on the E95S, I'm not sure because it looks like there's a band going around. Clip on here, again, very stiff, can't really move it. Unusual shape, very different shape. So there you can see it's undulating a little bit. If we look at the front, we've got I think that's the Waterman logo. I've got this bit of a cutout. I actually quite like that. It's just a little bit of detail. And we have a gold ring there with Waterman. And I think that's Karen on the back. Let's get these next to each other again. As we come down the rest of the body here, again, this is where we've got a big difference. At the end, and this is unusual on all my pens, it's got this unusually shaped end finial there. There's a little black plastic dot inside that gold coloured housing. Quite nice. Let's take the caps off. So with the E95S, it just slides off. I'm just going to purse that just to stop it from rolling around. With the Karen, again, pulls off. Again, I'll purse it just to stop the pen from moving around. Both of these have got inlaid nibs. Let's take a closer look at the nibs. So the first one we'll look at, this is with the Pilot. So the nib there, we've got 14K585, 14 karat gold nib. Pilot, medium, Japan, and then P622. You can use that to work out the month the nib was manufactured. With the Karen, slightly different shape. So with that Pilot, it looks like it's coming to a point near the bottom of the nib. Whereas on the Karen, it's got a cut out. The nib here, one of the things I have noticed you can see there, it does seem to collect the ink. I actually like that. I think it adds a bit of interest to the nib. What we've got, though, is we've got the Waterman logo in the middle. On the left side, we've got 18K. 
it's 18 karat gold nib then the right side 750 which is that i think it's an iso standard for 18 karat gold very nice both these pens i'll start with a karen they're both cartridge converter pens let's take the other one off they both came with a cartridge converter but with the pilot e95s it came with the com 40 but when you put it in all you could see past the threads here was just the top of the converter you couldn't actually see what was inside the converter so you really had no idea what your ink level was what i'm using is i'm using a pilot long cartridge and i just use a blunt nose syringe to put whatever color ink i want in there both of these pens are virtually out of ink after i've done this video I'll be cleaning them both out and then putting some different inks in them. I do like the fact it came with that cartridge converter. I say it just didn't work for me. Might work for you. So I just use a cartridge instead. Let's pop these back together. So there's both the pens. One final look at them together. What I'm going to do now is swap over and we'll do some size comparisons. Here we've got the pens all together. The two comparisons I've brought in Pilot Metropolitan, Lamy Safari, they're my standard pens for doing size comparisons. As you can see, the Pilot, a lot shorter than all the other pens, and the Karen, longer than all. I mean, it's obvious to see. Let's take these and look at these unposted. Unposted, the Safari and the Karen look very much similar lengths now, and also so does that Pilot Metropolitan. But the E95LS it's minute. Let me just show you that in my hand, unposted. I could get away with it maybe for a couple of words, maybe even a sentence, but wouldn't use this unposted other than that. The Karen, again, it's about the right size to use unposted. I'll show you it posted in a second though. So let's swap over and look at these posted. Now we've posted them, the E95S and the Waterman Karen, virtually the same size, aren't they? The Metropolitan slightly longer than both of them, the Safari a lot longer than both. Both these pens posted are the ideal size for me. And to be honest, they're not back heavy. They're the ideal weight as well. So here we've got the E95S. And then let's pop on the Waterman Karen as well. Gorgeous pens. Let's swap over and we'll fetch in some pens that are in roughly the same price ranges. So the pens that I've brought in, I've brought in a Narwhal Nautilus. This is in the Palagia Noctiluca pattern. Hopefully I pronounced that right. I paid 195 Aussie dollars for this. It's got a steel nib. The Pilot E95S. That was 195 Aussie dollars. So same cost, 14 karat gold nib. The Pilot Custom Heritage 92, that was 270 Aussie dollars when I bought it. That's about two years ago, so it's more than that now. That's got a 14 karat gold nib. And the Waterman Karen, that was 266 Aussie dollars with an 18 karat gold nib. So very close prices for each of these. I'm not going to show these any other way. I'm now going to swap over the camera and I'm going to fetch in the rule of measuring. Here we've got the rule of measuring. We'll start with the E95S. There we go. So with the cap on, 11.8 centimeters. Unposted, as I say, don't recommend using it this way. 10.5 centimeters. Posted. And get to sit still 14.7 centimeters the width of the cap that's 1.27 centimeters the body at its widest part is 1.2 centimeters the section a bit hard to actually decide where to measure these so i went from about here down to the bottom so it went from 0.95 centimeters up to 1.15 centimeters with the waterman karen so with the cap on 14.4 centimeters 
important to remember that number 14.4 unposted get to stop rolling unposted 12.8 with the cap on posted get that lined up that's about 14.8 centimeters so roughly only 0.4 centimeters difference between the pen posted and the pen capped the width of the cap that's 1.32 centimeters the body at its widest point 1.21 centimeters then the section that does from 0.99 up to 1.12 again quite difficult to decide where to put the section on that let's get this out of the way and fetch in the scales of weighing here we've got the scales of weighing so we'll start with the e95s again the whole pen 15 grams very light little bit of ink in there remember 10 grams for the body five grams for the cap the waterman karen the whole pen 33 grams more than double the weight the body 23 grams a lot more than the weight of the entire pen for the e95s the cap 11 grams again nearly the weight of the entire pen of the e95s we'll swap over now and we'll fetch in the notepad of testing here we've got the notepad of testing we're going to start with the e95s so making sure it's posted we have here a pilot e95s it's got a medium nib and it's 14 karat gold the price 195 aussie dollars the ink by diamine it's writer's blood this is generally a fairly wet ink for me drying times so we've got immediate 10 seconds if i can avoid knocking the notepad doesn't seem to have changed much 30 seconds one minute after a minute there that's nice and dry and you can tell there that's where i was using it unposted let's post the pen again i'm going to move the mic down to the page so you can hear the pen writing very nice it's smooth it's got a nice bit of feedback not a lot but there's a little bit of feedback there i've got to be honest both these pens are in the top five if not the top two of the best writers that i've got they're both absolutely gorgeous to write with let's have a look for any line variation so there's no pressure I'm going to add a bit of pressure i do think we get a slightly wider line we're also putting down more ink though no pressure with pressure none with none with so slightly wider i wouldn't want to push the nibs too far though then flow test that mid all the way across i'm actually pleased that the pen lasted because as i say it's virtually out of ink so that's the writing with the E95S. Let's swap over now. Just move the page up ever so slightly. And we'll write with the Waterman Karen. So here we've got, again, I like these posted, a Waterman. This has got a very different feel. It's still a gorgeous writer. It's got a little bit more feedback though, I think again we've got medium and this time we've got an 18 karat gold nib 
and I paid 266 Aussie dollars. Now, the prices I'm quoting, I don't buy these pens in Australia. I buy them from Europe. This is the price I pay excluding postage. The ink in here. Guess what? It's diamine. Writer's blood. Where possible, I'm trying to compare pens now with the same ink. Drying times. So we got this immediate. Looks a lot drier, doesn't it? 10 seconds. 30 seconds. One minute. After a minute, that one's nice and dry. Let's move the mic and do some writing. Line variation, no pressure. With pressure, so again, I do see a slightly wider line. Wouldn't put too much pressure on it though. None with, none with, none with. There's a hash mark. Flow. There we go. Again, it's not all the way across there. And again, I'm glad it survived because there's not a lot of ink in it. So what are my thoughts on these two pens? The E95S, really love it. The Waterman Karen, really love it. I've got to be honest, these are two pens. When I'm reaching for a pen, if they're both laid there, I struggle because they're so nice. They are both absolutely gorgeous writers. As I said, I won't be surprised. I'd put them in my top two writers at the moment. And if I was to do a top five pens today, this would be, I don't know, I would think, oh, I don't know, maybe position two and position one, but really close with how I would score them. If we look at the writing here, one of the things I have noticed is the difference in colour of the ink. On this Oxford Optic paper, the Diamine Writer's Blood on here, it looks a lot darker than what we're seeing with the Karen. With the Karen, I'm seeing a lot more shading. There's a lot more colour to it. You can see more of the purple colour, where when I see the E95S, that looks really dark, almost black. Now, for fetching my Tomai River paper, so I've actually got them on pages next to each other. Here's the, E9, here's the E95S. Here... Seen a lot of colour, seen a lot of that colour and seen bits of shading. Whereas on this one with the Karen, it's very, very wet and it's very dark on this Tomoe River paper. If I go down to the bottom, you can see here where I'm doing my swipes, they're all very similar. Whereas today we've noticed that 30 seconds, very similar, but, but the Waterman Karen when I put my ink down, it's a lot drier than what was seen like E95S. So interesting how different paper can affect it differently. I like the shape of both the pens. I like the weight. I like the comfort of use. I think it's a nice size. I do actually quite like in this posted. It's one of the few pens I would be happy to say I would use posted. With the E95S, got no option but to use it posted because otherwise it's too short. It does feel light. I like that because when I'm writing with this pen, because it's so light, it, it's like it disappears into my hand. I don't actually feel the pen there. Whereas with the Waterman, I always know that the pen's there in my hand. Two really nice pens. And the first word I've written down for both of these they're both classy pens. They're both pens 
you could quite happily take to that really top, super duper important business meeting and be quite happy to pull out and start using these pens. Whereas, you know, with that now wall, I couldn't have done that. They both write nicely. They write differently. I think the Karen's got a little bit more feedback, but I like the the way that the E95S feels when I'm writing. I've had no issues with skipping or hard starts with the E95S. You may have noticed a couple of issues when I was doing my writing sample. I find the sweet spot on this is a lot narrower. And if you're just slightly off, like there, it won't write. There it will. And it's just getting that sweet spot right. So that's why I get the occasional issue with the Karen. All in all, they're both gorgeous pens. Yes, they're not cheap. You know, we're talking 195 Aussie dollars for the cheapest of the two, which is the E95S. I think because they're gold nibbed, I think they're good value there. They both write gorgeously. They do their job. They let me get ideas out of my head and onto paper in a way that I enjoy. Absolutely gorgeous pens. Glad that I've got them. Glad I've got to be honest that I waited so long to get them because I think by looking at a lot of other pens that I've been doing over the last couple of years, this really lets me appreciate these even more. So this is my comparison of the Pilot E95S and the Waterman Karen, both with Diamine and Writer's Blood. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Have you got either of these pens? What are your thoughts on them? Have you got different colours in the Karen? I believe there's another colour as well in the E95S. I'd love to get your thoughts and comments about these. Please drop a comment down below. Let's kickstart the conversation. Please hit the thumbs up button every time you like, every time you comment, just helps with the YouTube algorithm. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel so that you can get new videos as I release them. I'll talk to you again soon.